What up, y'all? I'm back with another review, and I'm here to review the newest studio album from Danny Brown and Tyler. You know what I'm saying? Now, this is Danny's um, fifth studio album, I believe. Uh, my Uncle Danny, man. Our Uncle Danny. Let me, let me correct myself. Our Uncle Danny is just one of the most beloved artists in hip-hop right now. Probably in music, period. Like, Everybody loves Danny Brown. I know his voice can sometimes throw people off, but um, <clears throat> just him as a person, how real and how he just does not give a fuck, and just um, him being who he is is just contagious. It's fun. It's funny. It's just a good time, whether it's an album or an interview uh, or seeing him on a podcast. Like Danny Brown is just amazing. I've always said, it, for any of y'all out there who watch wrestling, especially WWE or watch New Japan, if Danny Brown was a wrestler, he'd be Shinsuke Nakamura. If Shinsuke Nakamura was a rapper, he'd be <clears throat> Danny Brown. So, so yeah, because whenever I see him, I just think about the other. If I see Shinsuke, I think about Danny. If I see Danny, I think about Shinsuke. It's just, just, just their mannerisms. Like, I, they just, I want them to meet. That would be, <laughs> that would be fucking amazing. Let's go ahead and get right into this. This was an 11 track album that was like 33 minutes long. And it's said to be executively produced by Q Tip, but then I look at the production credits. I think he only produced, or at least as the main producer, was only the producer of three or four tracks on here. Uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. Track number one, which is produced by Paul White. Shout out to Paul White, man. Hello, hello, personal film festival with Open Mike Eagle back in like March of 2016. It's been one of my favorite albums of the last coming up on four years, four years now. It was actually my second favorite album of 2016. <clears throat> the change up. This is Danny talking about how niggas thought he was done and how really this whole time since it's been what three years since Atrocity Exhibition, he's just he's actually been getting restless and. Just talks about never changing up, never looking back, and he speaks on how he has a devil on one shoulder and an angel on one, on the other shoulder, which is kind of unique because if you think about um, um, this is another WWE reference, you have the hurt hand and the heel hand with the fiend character of Bray Wyatt. So to hear that, it, it just made me think about that: angel, devil, hurt, heel, or hurt, heel, that type of thing. And he just talks about being lost in the streets and how he's he was found on the beat. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and guess he's talking about music. And he just also talks about time flying, how he's been distanced from his friends, um, but his enemies are close. And how he just stays, how he stays woke and stays uh, working. So this was a cool intro track. Track number two, theme song for Bitch Ass Niggas. It, theme song is the title, uh, but... <laughs> But it's for bitch ass niggas. He's making that very clear in this track with this kind of not clown show, but like a kind of like a circus, like a very the theme of this theme song is very not even wonky, just kind of cartoony, uh, some carny shit. And he just talks about how these niggas are in trouble because they've been fucking with Danny, they've been disrespecting him, and uh, he also talks about how there he doesn't really follow. He doesn't follow rules. He just does what he what he likes, what he wants to, which I can relate because when I have that opportunity to just do whatever I want, I'm just going to do that. Um, so I can, I can relate to that. I'm not saying I'm an outlaw or anything, but I'm like that, too. Like, I'm not trying to fuck with no rules like that. Like I'm just trying to do what I want to do. So I can relate to him saying that. He also talks about how these little niggas out here have just been learning from Danny like, they've been getting their style and everything from him. And he also talks, what did he say right here? Bullets is the lyrics, turn the rapper to a spirit. I said, shit, fucking Danny. You see, I know his voice can throw people off, but for those who don't know, Danny can freaking rap. And if, if you're a fan, you know that anyway. But <laughs> Danny will fuck your head up. And he just feels like an OG here with this track. Uh, Peace to Prodigy, by the way, because he had a reference to him on um, from the Shook Ones Part Two. He uh, quoted his verse from on that. So, Peace to Prodigy, man. Track number three, Dirty Laundry, which was the lead single, I believe. 
This track is, which the music video made this track really, really funny. Um, <laughs> and um, when I talk about, you know, like I said, Danny's voice, how it can be, it can throw some people off. This would be one of those tracks where it happens. But here, I feel like it fits with this beat and with the music video, especially because it's just so funny. You're just having a good time with this track. It's a track about Danny's sex life of the past, or at least what I. I'm guessing it's the past. It might still be like this. He's just airing his dirty laundry. Um, and he's sticking to that by drop, like the dirty laundry theme. He's sticking to that by dropping dropping references of bleach, um, soap, Clorox, Gain, Arm and Hammer, all that stuff. <clears throat> and what do you say? Stain your record like Clorox and, uh, and Darks. And he also said this was like a stand up comedy. Um, set rap, which I could see that. I just love to have. <laughs> imagine Joey Diaz doing a stand up with Danny Brown, but Danny's like rapping. Or like with this, it was a stand up rap, but he. It was a stand up comedy set, but he just rapped it here. It's like. <laughs> funny as shit. That'd be funny as shit. And, um,. It just feels like Andy is an old player right here, telling his um, story of his young and wild days. And like the music video really helps um, help me. I don't say help me, but it aimed me on to, to feel that way about this track. <clears throat> this was produced by Q-Tip, though. Uh, track number four, Three Tears featuring Run the Jewels, another single. And JPEG Mafia had a written credit or an un, um, uncredited verse on here, apparently. Uh, P-I-M-P in my own rhyme, space age gorilla pimping out the cage with mine. Uh, that was what Killer Mike said. Shout out to him for that MJG reference off space age. <coughs> space age pimping from 8-Ball MJG. I believe that's off the On Top of the World album. Uh, actually, I'm looking at it. It's on my wall right here. At least the, the album cover. It's on my wall. So... <laughs> Track number, yeah, track number five, Belly of the Beast, featuring, I hope I'm saying this right, a bon jire. Uh, oh, now I don't know if that's African name or maybe French. Uh, but another, another nice reference here to a southern hip-hop legend, uh, hip-hop legend period, actually, with, with this man. I ate so many shrimp, I got iodine poisoning. That's reference to Pimp C from a Sippin' on Scissor with, uh, and they were featured on 36 Mafia's track from like 99, 2000. Uh, shout out to Danny Man for putting Pimp C, um, putting that Pimp C reference out there. Rest in peace to the pimp. And um, he just talks about how what he's going through right now can't be real. It's like he's in a like he's in a dream, and how he doesn't have skin. He's just shining, and it can't be contained. And it feels like he's losing his mind. Like this track. There's another track on here that really goes with the theme of what this track is uh, going for, but it's towards the end, and we'll get to that. Uh, this track was also produced by Paul White. Just shout out to Paul White. He had a, I think it was 2018, he had his album, I forget what it was called, but I know my favorite track off of it was Returning. I still listen to that track to this day. It's just so freaking good. Um, track number six, Savage Nomad. Hard ass beat, man. Hard ass beat. Um, this is Danny really feeling himself, which is kind of just the way this is. I kind of feel like I'm feeling myself here because this beat just makes you feel like fuck everything, man. Like just be a savage nomad. And I've been called a savage before. Um, not necessarily a nomad. I don't necessarily go from one place to the other like that, but <laughs> just feeling this track. And it's produced by Player Hayes. <clears throat> Track number seven, Best Life. Another single. I want to say it's the last single to promote this album. <clears throat> but yeah, this is Danny talking about living his best life and getting out of the hood. And just, yeah, living his best life. And with a track like this, it reminds me of that track. Um, it was the second to last track. I forget what it was called off of Earl's album, some rap songs last year. Uh, it reminds me of that because 
I feel like this track means a lot to Danny the way that track did to Earl. That track, um, it was the one before Riot. And uh, it was Earl had a skit of his mother um, reading an sp- acceptance speech or just a speech and his father written, write, reading a poem that he had written. Uh, his father actually passed before that album uh, was put out. And he was trying to use that as a way to reconnect with his father. Well, the way that track feels or how I feel that might feel to Earl and how happy I am for Earl because he has that track. That's the way I feel about this track with Danny. Like, I'm really happy for Danny with this track. Track number eight. You know what I'm saying. Title track featuring a Bon Jire. And he, this is Danny, like, again, on his OG shit. Like, he really feels like an OG here. He really feels like an uncle just giving you some game but in a smooth Typical uncle kind of way. Um, just saying that you got to keep going. You got to just keep keep going. That's it. Like It's on some real feel-good, smooth, funky ride and shit. And again, Paul White with the production, man. Oh, boy. Paul White is just freaking amazing. I believe, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's from the UK. Um, so for him and Open Mike Eagle to hook up like that. Like, maybe they've known each other for a while. I didn't really check on that but whew, i checked number nine negro spiritual featuring jpeg mafia featuring um production from flying lotus and thundercat very vibrant track here it really fits the theme of the album and also especially with the album cover with just how vibrant and colorful that is it's also some alternative slash abstract hip-hop shit and <clears throat> Peggy made it a really he, he made it a really funny a really funny track with his verse on the course. Um his verse on the course. His uh just being on the course. And but it was real though. It was it was a real track. Just talking about taking the back road and how, how he's been hurt and niggas making shit physical or how it could be that way, so he's like, fuck it, I'm taking the back road and shit. It's that's some real shit and that's real that's another relatable part about this album. Like, I will take the back road or just go out of my way to avoid certain shit if I don't have to get into something. I'm just like, why? Why get into it if I don't have to? So, yeah, I can fuck with that. Track number 10, Shine. This was the track I was telling y'all about with track number 5, Belly of the Beast. If this beat had been on that track, like, Belly of the Beast, like, just... I can imagine you just been swallowed and you're in the belly of the beast and this atmospheric, just hazy, almost hypnotic beat is playing. You're looking up like, what the fuck is going on? I'm in the belly of the beast. <clears throat> but with this track featuring Blood Orange, this just took me to another world. I don't know if it's my favorite track on here or not, but man, and freaking Paul White again with the production and standing on the corner with the production, um, helping with the production here, they produced, um, it might not have been the only track, but I know they produced, um, or at least they were featured on On The Way from Earl's Some Rap Song last year. Just fantastic. Just talking about having to shine and get my, like I'm losing my mind before I'm running out of time. Like just not exactly in that, that's not how the chorus went. But still, and Blood Orange with that smooth, be on the same. Oh, man. Ah! Track number 11. The, actually, the last track. I almost got into this like the <laughs> album was going to keep going. Track number 11. Combat featuring, uh, okay, production from Q-Tip, but also featuring him and Consequence, which I believe is Q-Tip's cousin. I remember seeing him featured on Tribe albums, especially Beats, Rhymes, and Life, which was like the album from 96, 95, 96, I want to say. Um, just saying, like, the streets is a combat zone, and just being out here in this war zone, slanging and shit, just being young and dumb in the streets over this very, I guess you could say jazz, but just this jazz funk beat, like, just makes you want to step and just snap your fingers and get crazy as hell, maybe wet your hair a little bit and just start throwing it everywhere, well, um, slinging it everywhere and shit, uh, that did not get on the camera or on the webcam, thankfully. But yeah, this album is just <laughs> fantastic. Danny Brown has done it again. I don't know if I like it as much as Atrocity Exhibition. 
actually have a few notes, actually, I wrote about this album. Hold on. Um, again, love the, the MJG and Pimp C rep and Prodigy quote slash references. Like, shout out to them for that. Well, Danny and some of the features for that. Um, I like the second half over the first half. I will say that. Um, <clears throat> I'm still glad that it's an album, though, and not like a an EP. Like, the fact that it is an album kind of makes this more enjoyable. Like, if it had just been an EP of just great tracks, that would have been, yeah, that would have been fine. But to have this as a whole album, just the theme of this, I feel like I know what Danny's saying, but I'm going to keep listening to it until I not know for sure, but feel like I'm getting closer to knowing what Danny's saying. Um, this feels like a, not, not a come down from atrocity exhibition like it's worse, but a come down from like the high, the peak of atrocity exhibition. And this is the come down like where it's like it's not a bad thing because the come down is still cool. It's still smooth and easy and a come down feels good. Me with come downs, I'm drinking a lot of water. Maybe I should drink a lot of water this album and maybe I'll like it even more. Who knows? But um, I'm seeing growth here with this album. Um, it just feels like a, this album just feels like after your high has come down, it's like the back to reality and you're like, okay, I've reflected on my high, um, and I want better, but there are still some elements of atrocity exhibition here. And he, he really just feels like an OG here that has after the atrocity exhibition, just feeling like he's in the belly of the beast. Like when I said, there's elements of the, um, of atrocity exhibition, like with Sean, um, this just atrocity exhibition being um, the high, but maybe a bad high, like not an overdose, of course, but like, like maybe it took a little too much and you're like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? You're losing your mind. You're feeling good. You're feeling bad. And this is the calm down. This is the sobering. Yeah. So atrocity exhibition is like the maybe a little too high. This is the calm down and the sobering up. And just being back in reality and wanting to change some things about your reality. You realize it and reflect on it and you're high. But with the come down, you're still reflecting on it. And you're like, okay, it's time to clean my shit up. So I fuck with this album, man. I've got to get, I've got to give this album a, at least an 8 out of 10. I might come back, not necessarily do a review, but change the score. If I give it higher as I keep listening to it in the description. But for right now, I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. Um... It's just fantastic, <laughs> once again. So um, if you've heard this album, let me know what you think about it in the comment section below and what you think about my review on it. If you haven't heard this album, I definitely recommend re recommend that you check it out. Then come back, let me know what you think about it and what you think about my review. And yeah, be sure to hit the like button if you like this review. Share the review. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and like the content that you see. Also, be sure to check the description because my social media links are down there. My PSN links down there. Link. My PSN name is down there. Uh, the link to the stream this album is going to be down there. But you, of course, you can have it. You can find it yourself. But still, uh, I'm going to put it down there as, long, as well as um, a little bit of a wrap up summary of what I feel about this album plus the rating. Which you already know, it's an eight out of ten. And let me just get going. Thank y'all for watching, and I will see y'all next time.